The tactical room buzzed with ambient hums of machines sinking their endless streams of data. Maddox leaned against a control console, glancing at the hollow map flickering with Darsin 7's unpredictable dunes. The moon wasn't just another barren rock, it was a labyrinth, a place where the magnetic fields made the terrain shift like a living creature, creating new ridges and swallowing old pathways each day. The perfect place to hide something, or someone. Lieutenant Mira Danvers stood opposite him, her eyes narrowed to slits as she reviewed the briefing. Maddox knew that look. It was the look she reserved for orders she didn't like but was bound to carry out. Her fingers tapped a restless rhythm on the edge of the console, something she only did when she couldn't argue with command. You've got one mission, Maddox, she said, her voice clipped. Infiltrate the Surani outpost and assess the Queen's capabilities and motives. Earth Command suspects she's building a psionic weapon. If that's true, we need to know before she can. Level cities. Invade Earth. Maddox interrupted with a half-smile that didn't reach his eyes. He adjusted the seal on his stealth suit, knowing the routine too well. I've read the propaganda. Danvers didn't react to his sarcasm. Maddox, this isn't like the others. This queen, Althra, they say she's, she hesitated, clearly uncomfortable with the next word, different. Maddox raised an eyebrow. Different how? Command's unsure if she's trying to expand her influence or genuinely seeking a treaty. They can't risk either outcome without a guarantee. Danvers's voice softened, a rare break in her usual ice-cold demeanor. Your orders are to gather intel, get close, and find out what she's really planning. But if you suspect a threat, you call it in. And if there's no threat? Maddox countered, already knowing the answer. Then they'll fabricate one, Danvers replied quietly. She leaned closer, lowering her voice to a whisper. Listen, Maddox, if things get too deep, get out. Command's playing a dangerous game with pieces they don't fully understand. There it was, the subtext she couldn't say aloud. Maddox nodded once, understanding the weight of what she wasn't saying. Don't worry, Mira. I'll keep one eye on the mission and the other on the escape route. Danvers straightened, her icy demeanor snapping back into place. You've got twenty-four hours until the drop point. Stay sharp. And for what it's worth, Maddox, don't let her charm you. Charm. Maddox chuckled. She's an alien queen with possible mind powers. I'll try not to swoon. Just remember, Maddox, she's not your type, Danvers said as she cut the transmission, leaving him alone with the hum of the consoles. The entry to Darsin, Seven wasn't gentle. Maddox's pod rattled violently as it breached the moon's ever-shifting atmosphere. Each layer of magnetic interference disrupted the instruments, forcing him to rely on nothing but his instincts and the countdown flashing across the HUD in front of him. Ten seconds, he muttered under his breath, flexing his fingers inside his gauntlets. Five. Four. The pod broke free from the turbulence, plunging towards the surface like a missile. A perfect opening. Nobody could track him amidst the chaos. The onboard system started screaming warnings, red lights flashing as the impact countdown reached zero. He hit the ground hard, the force knocking the breath from his lungs. But the suit held, absorbing most of the kinetic impact. The pod split open, letting in the harsh, reddish light of Darsin 7's twin suns. Maddox exhaled slowly, scanning the horizon. The desert around him rippled like the surface of a restless ocean, dunes shifting subtly, as if the land were breathing. Welcome to paradise, he muttered, tapping the visor's edge to switch to infrared. The dunes lit up in a spectrum of heated colors, but no visible life signs, yet. He moved quickly, activating the cloaking module on his suit. The fabric shimmered briefly, adjusting to the landscape before rendering him almost invisible. In an environment like this, visibility meant vulnerability. The outpost wasn't marked on any map, of course, it wouldn't be. His intel gave only vague coordinates that kept drifting as the landscape shifted. Maddox kept moving, using the shifting magnetic currents as cover. The landscape changed every few hours, but he had a narrow window to reach the Surinese stronghold before the sand swallowed the current path. His breathing was steady, calculated, as he reached the supposed entry point, a jagged formation of crystalline rock, half buried in the red sands. He tapped a small sensor pad embedded in his wrist guard, syncing it with the crystal's latent energy signals. The device blinked in response, confirming he was in the right place. Come on, 
Maddox whispered, carefully probing the crystal's surface. There was no obvious doorway, no hidden panel. The outpost's stealth technology was good. Damn good. Just then, his sensors buzzed softly, a faint reading approaching from the northeast. Maddox went still, his hand hovering over the compact sidearm holstered at his waist. The sands parted slightly, revealing a creature that resembled a large feline with silver eyes and sleek, reddish fur. It sniffed the air, its nostrils flaring as it zeroed in on Maddox's position. Psionic hounds. Maddox's stomach tightened. The Surani had genetically engineered these creatures to sense disruptions in the surrounding psionic field. They didn't need to see him, they could feel him. Maddox adjusted his posture, knowing sudden movement would trigger the beast's instincts. He slowly extended his arm, using a small emitter to manipulate the ambient field and create a false echo a few meters away. The hound's ears twitched, and it padded towards the disturbance. Maddox released a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. But the reprieve was short-lived. A voice cut through the silence, rich, clear, and undeniably commanding. You're trespassing on Surani territory, human. Maddox turned slowly to see her. Althara. Her presence was unmistakable. Tall and statuesque, her dusky red skin shimmering with delicate silver ripple marks that seemed to shift with her every movement. She stood calmly amidst the shifting sands, her eyes fixed on him with a mixture of curiosity and caution. She held a staff, not as a weapon but as an extension of herself, and the crystalline tip pulsed softly with an inner light. Maddox recognized it instantly as a channeling rod, used to focus and amplify psionic abilities. He'd read the reports, studied the briefings, but seeing it in person was something else entirely. Who are you? she asked, her voice a careful balance of authority and restraint. She didn't raise her voice, didn't shout, because she didn't need to. Maddox deactivated his cloaking, knowing there was no use in hiding now. He raised his hand slightly, a show of compliance, even as his mind raced through possible contingencies. I'm just a lost traveler, he said, forcing a disarming smile. Didn't mean to intrude. Althara tilted her head slightly, as if weighing his words against something deeper. A lost traveler in full stealth gear, on a moon with no recorded settlements? You must take me for a fool. There was no malice in her words, just quiet, analytical certainty. Maddox had faced hostile aliens, ruthless mercenaries, and calculating commanders, but none unnerved him quite like Althara in that moment. It was the way she stood there, completely at ease in her surroundings, like the desert was her domain and he was merely passing through. Well, Maddox replied, lowering his hands but keeping his tone light, I didn't say I was a good traveler. Althra's lips curved slightly, the faintest hint of a smile. Not one of amusement, but of recognition, acknowledging the dance of words between them. Your lies are thin, but your intentions remain veiled. I should detain you immediately, but I find myself intrigued. Maddox's instincts screamed at him to deny, deflect, retreat. But he didn't. He couldn't. Let's call it curiosity, he said, meeting her gaze head on. You've been hiding out here for a reason, and I need to know what that reason is. You presume much, human, Althra replied, the warmth draining from her voice. Curiosity often leads to misfortune. He felt a subtle pressure in the air, like the moment before a storm hits. Maddox had faced danger before, but this felt different. Less like a threat and more like a crossroads, a decision point where the wrong step could unravel everything. So does ignorance, Maddox countered. He was gambling now, risking the little trust he hadn't earned yet. If you let me leave, I'll keep looking for answers. And you'll keep watching from a distance, wondering if I'm finding them. Althara regarded him in silence, the hound circling her with its eyes never leaving Maddox's face. He knew he was playing with fire, but he had to keep pushing. He had to make her curious enough to let him stay. And if I detain you, she asked, almost thoughtfully. Maddox didn't hesitate. Then you get to keep your secrets. But you also lose the opportunity to know mine. There was a long silence, broken only by the shifting sands. Althara studied him for a moment longer before lowering her staff. You're bold, human. But boldness is not always foolishness. Very well, you will not be detained. For now. Maddox felt the tension ease slightly but didn't dare relax. 
And what should I call my generous captor? Althara, she replied, turning to lead him towards the crystalline rock. It began to hum softly, the surface shimmering as she touched it with her staff. A hidden passageway slid open, revealing a dimly lit corridor leading into the depths of the outpost. You are an intruder here, Maddox, but perhaps not an enemy. Time will tell. As he followed her into the outpost, Maddox couldn't shake the feeling that he was descending into something far more complex than a simple espionage mission. The air grew cooler, the walls lined with flowing patterns of bioluminescent script. The outpost was alive, connected to something deeper, something that resonated with the planet's shifting heartbeat. He glanced back at the desert one last time, watching the sand shift and reform as the hidden door sealed shut behind them. There was no turning back now. Althara led him deeper into the heart of the outpost, and Maddox felt a thrill of anticipation beneath his unease. He didn't know where this path would lead, or if he could survive whatever secrets lay ahead. But one thing was certain, Althara was offering more than just secrets, and Maddox wasn't sure he could resist taking the bait. The corridor walls shifted with subtle pulses of light, revealing lines of bioluminescent symbols that glowed softly with each step Althara took. Maddox couldn't shake the feeling that the place was watching him, responding to Althara's presence and adapting to her thoughts. It was unsettling, the way the outpost felt alive, as if it were an extension of her will. Your outpost is different, Maddox said, his voice low and casual, as if commenting on the weather. He wasn't sure why he spoke, but the silence felt too heavy to let it linger. Different, Althara echoed, not turning to look at him. That is one word for it. They continued through the corridor, passing more of the glowing script. Maddox tried not to focus on the intricate symbols, their fluid design both beautiful and unreadable. He had been trained to recognize patterns and analyze visual information quickly, but these symbols felt like they held layers of meaning that eluded him, like a language meant to be felt rather than deciphered. How did you build this place? he asked, trying to sound curious but not overly eager. The architecture's not like anything I've seen on Earth or in the colonies. Because it is not of your world, Althara replied simply. The Surani do not force the environment to bend to our will as your kind does. We listen to the land, and in return, it allows us to remain hidden. Maddox caught a note of reproach in her words, though her tone remained even. He filed it away, another small insight into how she saw humans, as intruders who imposed rather than coexisted. So, you're in harmony with the land, he said, glancing at her sideways. Doesn't that make your people more vulnerable if the environment changes? Althara paused, her eyes narrowing slightly, as if considering whether to answer. Adaptation is not vulnerability, Maddox, she said finally, her voice cool. It is our strength. Maddox didn't respond. He could see that she wasn't offering information freely, only small pieces of a much larger puzzle. He needed to change his approach. They emerged into a circular chamber lined with thin, arching columns that seemed to grow from the floor like the roots of a great tree. At the center stood a massive, pulsating crystal structure, a sprawling array of interlocking formations that seemed to hum with an almost imperceptible frequency. The entire room was filled with a soft, soothing resonance, like a distant lullaby. It's beautiful, Maddox admitted, unable to keep the awe from his voice. Your words are genuine, Althara observed studying him with an intensity that made him feel exposed. Unexpected, for a spy. Maddox met her gaze without flinching. You seem certain that I'm a spy. You arrived in stealth gear, unannounced and uninvited, she replied evenly. And you possess a keen interest in matters you were not meant to witness. Either you are a spy, or you are a fool. Which is it? Maddox suppressed a smile. Why not both? Althara's expression remained impassive, but there was a glimmer of something, amusement, perhaps, in her silver eyes. You are bold, Maddox, she said, and this time there was the barest trace of approval in her voice. But boldness does not equate to trust. And yet, you haven't thrown me into a cell, Maddox pointed out, his tone carefully neutral. Why is that? Althara tilted her head slightly, as if contemplating the answer herself. Because I have questions of my own, she replied, and you are not without value, for now. Maddox didn't like the implication, but he hid his discomfort behind a nonchalant grin. He knew this was a dangerous game, they were both probing for weaknesses, both trying to establish control without outright conflict. 
He had to tread carefully if he wanted to gain her trust, or at least enough of it to keep himself alive. You're assuming I have answers, Maddox said, keeping his voice light. But let's be honest, you've probably figured out everything about me by now. Your demeanor suggests a soldier, Althara said thoughtfully. But you speak like an ambassador. You feign curiosity, yet you deflect when the conversation approaches certain subjects. And while you claim to be lost, you are clearly here with purpose. Maddox felt a chill run down his spine. She wasn't just observing him, she was dissecting him. He needed to regain the upper hand, if only for a moment. Well, he said, adopting a conspiratorial tone, since you've got me all figured out, what would it take to earn your trust? Althara regarded him silently, her expression unreadable. For a moment, Maddox thought he had pushed too far, crossed an invisible line. But then she spoke, her voice measured and cautious. Trust is not a commodity to be exchanged, she said. It is earned through actions, not words. Fair enough, Maddox replied. Then how about a gesture of good faith? Althara raised an eyebrow, intrigued. What do you propose? Maddox hesitated, weighing his options. He needed to offer something valuable enough to keep her interested, but not so revealing that he compromised his mission. After a moment, he decided on a calculated risk. You want to know why I'm here, he said, lowering his voice. The truth is, I was sent to gather information, on you, on this place. But I wasn't given the full picture. My orders are to find out what you're planning, and, well, let's just say Earth Command is paranoid. Althara's eyes narrowed slightly, and Maddox felt the pressure in the air intensify. He knew he was skating on thin ice, but he had to keep going. They think you're developing a weapon, he continued, choosing his words carefully. Something that could destabilize the region. But I get the feeling there's more to this than they realize. Althara remained silent, her gaze fixed on him with unsettling focus. Maddox couldn't tell if she believed him, but he knew he couldn't afford to back down now. You could just kill me, he said quietly. Or you could let me help you. Help me, Althara repeated, a note of skepticism creeping into her voice. And what would you gain from such an arrangement? Answers, Maddox replied without hesitation. And maybe a chance to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. Althara's expression softened, but only slightly. She took a step closer, her eyes searching his face for something. Deception, perhaps, or sincerity. Maddox held her gaze, refusing to look away. You speak of peace, Althara said softly. Yet your people approach with weapons. They're scared, Maddox admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. They don't understand your people. But I'm not like them. I'm here to learn, not to destroy. Althara studied him for a moment longer before turning her attention to the crystal array. She ran her fingers lightly over the surface, and the resonance shifted, becoming almost melancholic. Maddox felt the change in the air, something deeper, more personal. You seek knowledge, Althara said, her voice distant. But knowledge is a burden, and some burdens cannot be shared. Maddox frowned, unsure of what she meant. What's that supposed to? A sudden, sharp pain shot through his head, cutting off his words. He stumbled, clutching his temples as a flood of fragmented images rushed through his mind. Flashes of the outpost, glimpses of distant worlds, and whispers of voices he couldn't quite understand. It was overwhelming, like trying to listen to a hundred conversations at once. What, what is this? he gasped, struggling to stay on his feet. Althara didn't answer. She remained still, watching him with an expression of quiet intensity. Maddox felt as if the entire room was spinning, the walls closing in around him. He tried to focus, to regain control, but the images kept coming. Faster, clearer, more vivid. And then, just as suddenly as it began, the pain vanished. The images faded, leaving only a lingering sense of disorientation. Maddox took a shaky breath, trying to steady himself. Your mind is unguarded, Althara said softly, her voice almost a whisper. You lack the barriers to withstand psionic influence. Maddox clenched his fists, fighting down a surge of anger and fear. He had been trained to resist interrogation techniques, to endure physical pain and psychological manipulation. But this was something else entirely. Something beyond his understanding. What did you do to me? He demanded, 
his voice harsh. I showed you a glimpse, Althra replied, her tone neutral. A glimpse of what lies beyond your comprehension. Maddox felt his pulse quicken. He didn't like being toyed with, didn't like feeling powerless. But he couldn't afford to lose control, not now. He took a deep breath, forcing himself to stay calm. You could have killed me, he said quietly. But you didn't. Your life has value, Althra replied, almost as if stating an undeniable fact. If you seek the truth, then earn the right to learn it. Maddox stared at her, trying to read the intentions behind those silver eyes. He still didn't trust her, not fully, but he couldn't deny the curiosity gnawing at the edges of his thoughts. All right, he said, his voice steady. But if we're going to do this, you need to give me something in return. A gesture of good faith. Althra raised an eyebrow, considering his words. After a moment, she nodded. Very well, Maddox. Ask your questions. Maddox's heart pounded as he tried to formulate the right question. One that wouldn't reveal too much, but would still give him something substantial to work with. Finally, he settled on the most pressing question in his mind. Why are you really here? he asked. What's the purpose of this outpost? Althra turned away from him, her gaze drifting towards the crystal array. For a moment, she seemed lost in thought, as if weighing the consequences of her answer. Then she spoke, her voice barely above a whisper. This outpost is not a fortress, she said. It is a sanctuary, a place where the Surini can preserve what remains of our past, and safeguard what may become our future. Maddox frowned, confused. Safeguard from what? Althra's expression darkened, her voice carrying a weight of sorrow. From the echoes of a calamity that once shattered the stars, Maddox felt a chill run down his spine. He didn't know what she meant, but he knew one thing for certain. Whatever secrets Althra was guarding, they were far more dangerous than Earth Command had ever imagined. And he wasn't sure if he was ready to face them. Maddox felt the cold air tighten around him like a noose as he walked through the winding passages of the outpost. Every step seemed to resonate with the structure, the crystal walls subtly shifting color and texture in response to Althra's presence beside him. The corridors stretched onward, becoming narrower, more intimate, until the walls seemed to vibrate with an unspoken tension. You still haven't answered my question, Maddox said, breaking the silence. His voice sounded strangely small, swallowed up by the vastness of this place. What happened to the Surani? What calamity are you hiding from? Althra didn't look at him, but her fingers traced the walls lightly, as if drawing out forgotten memories. The calamity was not just an event, Maddox. It was a consequence. A price paid for what our people once tried to control. There are forces in this galaxy that even the most advanced civilizations cannot bend to their will. That's pretty cryptic, Maddox muttered, trying to keep his frustration in check. He was losing track of what was real and what was misdirection. It must be, Althra said softly, her voice almost a whisper. Until I know what you truly seek. They came to a wide opening in the corridor, and Maddox felt the hair on the back of his neck stand up as the room revealed itself. It was a vast, domed chamber lined with rows of ancient consoles, all surrounding a central core, an enormous crystal formation that pulsed with faint white light. The walls were adorned with more of those bioluminescent symbols, flowing and shifting like they were alive, the language still unfamiliar to Maddox but mesmerizing all the same. What is this place? he asked, feeling an unsettling sense of reverence. Althara stepped forward, her gaze fixed on the massive crystal. This is the Psion Archive, she replied. It is the collective memory of my people, a conduit to our past and the anchor to our future. Collective memory? Maddox raised an eyebrow. You're saying that crystal holds. What, your history? Not just our history, Althara corrected. It holds our knowledge, our culture, our essence. Every significant thought, experience, and discovery made by the Surani is stored here. The gravity of her words hung heavy in the air. Maddox struggled to process it, the implications sinking in. If she was telling the truth, the archive wasn't just a data storage system, it was a lifeline to an entire civilization, a memory bank that held everything that made the Surani who they were. You said you were hiding from the echoes of a calamity, Maddox said slowly, trying to piece it together. Are you saying that what happened to your people was caused by all of this? Althra's eyes met his, and he saw the pain reflected there, a deep, 
unhealed wound. The Surani once attempted to harness the Psion network to expand our influence, to control what could not be controlled. But our reach exceeded our grasp, and the network fractured under the strain. Maddox tried to imagine it. An entire race pushing the limits of their psionic abilities until the system itself broke. It was a sobering thought, and he found himself wondering just how desperate the Surani had been to try something so dangerous. And now you're here, he said, gesturing vaguely to the room around them, hiding out in the middle of nowhere, with a giant memory crystal and no clear plan. What's your endgame, Althra? For a moment, she didn't respond. When she did, her voice was laced with quiet resignation. There is no endgame, Maddox. Only survival. My people are scattered, our numbers dwindling. The Psion Archive is the last vestige of what we once were. If it fails, our culture will vanish. Our memories, our language, everything that made us Surani will be lost. Maddox felt the weight of her words settle on his shoulders. This wasn't just about politics or weapons or alliances. This was about the survival of an entire civilization. A people on the brink of extinction, clinging to their last remnants of identity. He didn't have time to process this revelation before the sharp ping of his wrist communicator interrupted his thoughts. Maddox tensed, glancing down at the encrypted signal flashing urgently. It was Lieutenant Danvers. Excuse me, he said, backing away from Althra as he turned his body to shield the communicator. He tapped the device, opening a secure channel. Maddox, Danvers's voice came through, low and urgent. You've been dark for too long. What's your status? Maddox hesitated, glancing back at Althra, who had turned her attention back to the crystal core. He lowered his voice to a whisper. I'm inside the outpost. Althra is. Well, she's not what we thought. That's not your call to make, Danvers replied sharply. You have your orders. What's the status of the disruptor? The disruptor. Maddox had nearly forgotten about it. Command had equipped him with a viral device designed to disable the Psion network by targeting the core crystal. It was a last resort measure, one Maddox had been hoping he wouldn't have to use. But now, with Althra's words still echoing in his mind, he felt the full weight of that order bearing down on him. I need more time, Maddox said, trying to keep his voice steady. There's more going on here than... You don't have more time, Danvers interrupted, her voice cold. Earth Command has launched a task force. They'll reach Darsin 7 in 12 hours. You need to plant the disruptor and get out of there before they arrive. Wait, a task force? Maddox felt a surge of panic. You're sending in a strike team? Althra hasn't. This isn't a negotiation, Maddox, Danvers snapped. If you don't complete your mission, we will. Is that clear? Maddox clenched his jaw, his thoughts racing. He glanced back at Althra, who was now standing with her back to him, her fingers resting gently on the crystal surface. She looked so composed, so certain, and yet there was a vulnerability there that made him hesitate. Understood, Maddox said finally, his voice tight. He cut the transmission and took a steadying breath, trying to calm his racing heart. He had a choice to make, a choice that would define whether he was the soldier Earth Command wanted him to be, or something else entirely. He had come here to spy, to gather intel, and to follow orders. But now he knew the truth, or at least a part of it. And that truth was far more complicated than anything Command had prepared him for. He moved silently towards the central core, slipping the disruptor from a concealed pocket in his suit. The device was small, no larger than a credit chip, but Maddox knew its destructive potential. If he planted it here, it would spread through the Psion network like a virus, rendering the entire system inert. The Surani would lose everything. Their culture, their history, their identity, it would all be wiped out. Maddox felt a knot of guilt tighten in his chest. He had sworn an oath to protect Earth's interests, to carry out his orders without hesitation. But he couldn't shake the feeling that this wasn't just a mission, it was an execution. Do you intend to destroy us, Maddox? Althra's voice broke the silence, startling him. She hadn't turned around, but somehow she knew, whether through intuition or psionic awareness, he couldn't be sure. Maddox froze, the disruptor still clutched in his hand. You knew. I suspected, she replied, her voice calm. You are conflicted. The turmoil in your mind is like a storm, 
and I am standing in the eye. Maddox lowered the disruptor, feeling his resolve crumbling. I was sent here to protect my people, he said quietly. But this isn't what I signed up for. Althera turned to face him, her expression unreadable. Do you believe my people are a threat? I don't know what to believe anymore, Maddox admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. But I do know that Earth Command won't listen to reason. If I don't do this, they'll send in their strike team, and then this place won't survive. For the first time, Althra's composure cracked, a flash of fear crossing her face. You must leave, she said urgently. Now, before they arrive. And let them destroy you. Maddox shook his head. I can't do that, Althra. Not after everything I've seen. Althra's eyes met his, and he saw something there, something raw and vulnerable. It wasn't just desperation. It was trust. She was placing her faith in him, despite everything, despite their differences. Then what will you do? she asked, her voice barely a whisper. Maddox took a deep breath, the weight of his decision settling over him like a heavy cloak. I'll warn them, he said finally. I'll call off the strike. Althra looked at him with a mixture of hope and uncertainty. Can you do that? I don't know, Maddox replied honestly. But I have to try. He turned away, raising his wrist communicator to his mouth. Lieutenant Danvers, this is Maddox. I need to. A sharp pain exploded in the back of his skull, and the world went black. When Maddox regained consciousness, he was lying on the cold floor of the chamber, his head throbbing. He tried to move, but his hands were bound behind him with some kind of magnetic restraint. You should have killed him, Althra, came a low, menacing voice. Maddox looked up to see Karen standing over him, his expression cold and unforgiving. He is a threat to us all. Karen, Althra's voice was firm, but there was an edge of desperation in it. This is not the way. It is the only way, Karen snapped, turning his glare on her. He betrayed us. You cannot allow this human to compromise our sanctuary. He did not betray us, Althra said quietly, her voice steady. He chose to help us. Karen scoffed, his fingers tightening around the hilt of his weapon. And you believe his words. He is an infiltrator, a spy. He will destroy us from within. Maddox struggled against his restraints, the fog in his mind slowly lifting. He could feel the tension between Althra and Karen, feel the fragility of their alliance hanging by a thread. He needed to act quickly, or this would all fall apart. Althra, he said, his voice hoarse. Let me prove it. Karen turned to him, his eyes narrowing. Prove what, human? Let me contact my people, Maddox continued, forcing himself to stay calm. Let me stop the strike. You expect us to believe, Karen began, but Althra cut him off. Karen, enough, she said sharply. She turned her gaze to Maddox, her expression hardening. If you fail us, Maddox, if you bring death to my people. I won't, Maddox said, meeting her gaze with all the conviction he could muster. I promise. Althra studied him for a long moment before nodding slowly. She reached out, placing her hand on the restraints, and they released with a soft click. Maddox flexed his fingers, feeling the blood flow return. Go, Althra said, her voice tight with urgency. And if you are true to your word, then perhaps there is hope yet. Maddox didn't hesitate. He rose to his feet, activating his wrist communicator once more. Lieutenant Danvers, this is Maddox. Abort the strike. Repeat, abort the strike. There was a long silence, and Maddox felt his heart pounding in his chest. Finally, Danvers's voice came through, cold and emotionless. You're out of line, Maddox, she said. The strike proceeds as planned. No, Maddox replied, his voice firm. If you go through with this, you'll be responsible for the deaths of innocent people. I'm ordering you to stand down. Danvers laughed, a hollow, mirthless sound. You don't have that authority, Maddox. You're just a soldier following orders. Not anymore, Maddox said, his voice steady. You're going to have to kill me first. There was another long silence, and then Danvers sighed. Very well, Maddox. You've made your choice. God help you. The transmission cut off, leaving Maddox standing in the quiet chamber, 
the weight of his decision bearing down on him like a storm. He turned to Althara, who was watching him with a mixture of relief and disbelief. It's done, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. But they'll be back. Althara nodded slowly, her expression somber. Then we will be ready. Maddox felt a strange sense of peace settle over him. He didn't know what the future held, but for the first time in a long time, he felt like he was on the right path. And that was enough. The chamber was quieter than before, a heavy, almost sacred stillness lingering in the air. Althara and Maddox stood facing each other, the silence between them full of things unspoken. Maddox's wrist communicator felt like a cold weight against his skin, a reminder of the irreversible decision he'd made. He had defied Earth Command, a betrayal in the eyes of some, an act of conscience in the eyes of others. But he couldn't afford to think about the consequences now. Althara's silver eyes studied him, searching for something, doubt, perhaps, or hidden motives. Maddox held her gaze, feeling the unsteady rhythm of his own heartbeat, as if waiting for her to pass judgment. You have chosen a dangerous path, Maddox, Althara said finally, her voice quiet and almost sorrowful, one that could lead to your own destruction. It's not the first time, Maddox replied with a slight grin, trying to keep the mood from tipping into the bleak territory it seemed headed for. Besides, it's starting to feel like danger follows me around. You deflect with humor, Althara observed, her expression softening slightly. But there is fear in your eyes. Maddox looked away, unable to deny it. He wasn't used to being read so easily, and it left him feeling exposed. Fear keeps you sharp, he said after a moment. It reminds you of what's at stake. And what is at stake? Althara asked, her voice laced with curiosity. More than just this outpost, Maddox replied, his voice steady despite the turmoil beneath. More than your people, or mine. It's about understanding. About finding a way to live in this galaxy without turning every difference into a war. Althara didn't respond immediately, and when she did, her voice was barely above a whisper. You speak of a future I once dreamed of, long ago. What happened to that dream? Maddox asked softly, not sure why he wanted to know, only that he needed to. Althara hesitated, her fingers tracing the lines of the crystal core as if drawing strength from its resonance. It faded, she said finally, her voice tinged with regret. The calamity shattered more than our Psion network. It fractured our trust in one another, and in ourselves. The dream of unity was replaced with fear and isolation. Maddox felt a pang of empathy, an emotion he hadn't expected to feel in this place, in the presence of someone who was supposed to be his enemy. He wanted to say something, to offer words of comfort or hope, but he knew they would sound hollow. He wasn't here to fix the mistakes of the past, only to keep the future from repeating them. Just then, the distant rumble of approaching footsteps broke the silence. Maddox turned to see Karen entering the chamber, his expression cold and unyielding. The tension in the air thickened instantly, and Maddox could sense the barely contained anger simmering beneath the surface. You should not have let him live, Althara, Karen said, his voice low and accusing. He is a threat to our people, a threat to everything we have fought to preserve. And yet, he is still here, Althara replied calmly. That is my decision to make. It is a mistake, Karen retorted, his eyes narrowing as he turned his gaze on Maddox. You think you can trust this human? He will betray us the moment it suits his purpose. Maddox opened his mouth to respond, but Althara raised a hand, silencing him. If he intended to betray us, he would not have warned us of the strike, she said firmly. Maddox is an outsider, yes, but he has chosen to stand with us. Karen's jaw tightened, his fists clenching at his sides. You are placing your faith in the wrong person, Althara. The human's words are poison, designed to manipulate and deceive. Maybe, Maddox interjected, unable to stay silent any longer. He took a step forward, meeting Karen's glare head-on. But your distrust isn't going to protect your people. It's only going to make things worse. Karen's eyes flashed with anger, and for a moment, Maddox thought he might attack. But Althara intervened, stepping between them with a commanding presence that seemed to defuse the tension. Enough, she said, her voice carrying an authority that left no room for argument. This conflict serves no purpose. We have more pressing matters to attend to. Karen's expression hardened, 
but he nodded reluctantly. What is your plan, Althra? Althra turned to Maddox, and he saw the uncertainty in her eyes, an uncertainty she was trying to mask with resolve. We cannot stay here, she said quietly. The Psion Archive is vulnerable. If the humans return in force, we will not be able to defend it. Then what's the alternative? Maddox asked. Relocation? Some kind of evacuation. It is not so simple, Althra replied, her voice tinged with frustration. The archive cannot be moved. It is bound to the fabric of this place, woven into the very essence of the land. If we attempt to remove it, we risk severing the connection permanently. Maddox frowned, his mind racing. He didn't fully understand the intricacies of the Psion network, but he could see that Althra was facing an impossible choice. Stay and risk destruction, or leave and risk losing everything. There has to be another way, Maddox said, his voice firm. Some way to buy more time, or create a diversion. Something that will keep command off your back long enough for you to figure out a solution. Karen scoffed. You presume much, human. As if your people would simply turn back if you ask nicely. Maybe not, Maddox admitted, his frustration growing. But if I can convince them that this outpost isn't a threat, that there's no weapon being developed here. Karen's eyes narrowed. And you expect them to believe that? Maddox felt a surge of defiance. I don't expect anything, Karen. But I'm willing to try. What about you? There was a long silence, the air heavy with unspoken tension. Maddox could see the conflict in Karen's eyes, the struggle between his distrust of Maddox and his loyalty to Althra. He didn't know if he could sway Karen's opinion, but he had to at least try. Finally, Karen spoke, his voice low and bitter. I will not stand idly by while my people are led to ruin. But if Althra wishes to place her trust in you, then so be it. Althra inclined her head in acknowledgement. Thank you, Karen. Karen's expression remained stony as he turned to leave the chamber, but there was a flicker of something else. Reluctant acceptance, perhaps. Maddox couldn't tell for sure, but he took it as a small victory. When they were alone again, Althra turned to Maddox her eyes reflecting a mixture of gratitude and doubt. You are a strange man, Maddox, she said softly. You defy your own people to protect those you do not understand. Maybe I just don't like being told who my enemies are, Maddox replied, his voice tinged with a hint of irony. Or maybe I'm just stubborn. Althra almost smiled at that, but the moment passed quickly. She took a step closer, her expression turning serious. If you truly wish to help us, there is something you must see. Maddox felt a shiver of anticipation run down his spine. What is it? The truth, Althra replied, her voice barely above a whisper. The truth of what lies beyond this outpost, and the danger that threatens us all. She turned towards a section of the wall, pressing her hand against a series of glowing symbols. The wall responded, shifting and parting to reveal a hidden passageway leading deeper into the heart of the outpost. Maddox felt a sense of trepidation as he followed her, the passage narrowing until it felt more like a tunnel burrowing into the earth. As they walked, the light grew dimmer, the walls becoming rougher and more uneven. Maddox could feel the energy in the air, an almost palpable tension, like the build-up before a storm. Althra moved with purpose, her steps steady and unhesitating, as if she had walked this path a thousand times before. Finally, they reached a large chamber, and Maddox felt his breath catch in his throat. The room was filled with ancient relics, artifacts and sculptures made from the same crystalline material as the core, all arranged in a circular pattern around a central dais. But what drew his attention was the massive, fractured crystal formation that stood at the center, its surface marred with deep cracks that seemed to pulse with an ominous light. This, Althara said, her voice heavy with emotion, is the fragment. Maddox frowned, his instincts telling him to keep his distance. What is it? It is a remnant of the calamity, Althra replied, her eyes fixed on the crystal. A piece of the original Psion network that was shattered when our people attempted to expand its reach. The fragment is what remains of that failure, a broken conduit that connects to echoes of a power beyond our comprehension. Beyond your comprehension? Maddox repeated, the words sending a chill down his spine. What kind of power are we talking about? Althra turned to him, and in her eyes, he saw a depth of fear he hadn't thought possible. A power that does not belong in this galaxy, she said quietly. 
The fragment is linked to a force that existed long before the Surani, and perhaps long before the birth of your world. It is a power that hungers for dominion, for expansion, and it is awakening. Maddox felt a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. You think it's coming back? I know it is, Althra replied, her voice trembling ever so slightly. And if the fragment is disturbed, it could act as a beacon, drawing that ancient force back to this world. Maddox stared at her, trying to process what she was saying. It sounded like something out of a nightmare, an ancient entity waiting to be unleashed upon an unsuspecting galaxy. And yet, the fear in Althra's eyes told him that this was no mere legend. So, if Earth Command sends in their strike team, Maddox began, his voice trailing off as he realized the implications. They will awaken the entity, Althra finished, her voice barely above a whisper, and we will be powerless to stop it. Maddox felt a surge of panic, his mind racing. He had to find a way to warn Command, to stop them from making a catastrophic mistake. But time was running out, and he didn't know if they would listen. What do we do? he asked, his voice tinged with desperation. Althra took a deep breath, her expression resolute. We must seal the fragment, she said. There is a ritual, a binding technique that can reinforce the barriers between the Psion network and the entity. But it requires the cooperation of both our people. Maddox hesitated, feeling the enormity of the task weighing on him. He wasn't sure if he could convince Earth Command to cooperate, especially after everything that had happened. But he also knew that if he didn't try, the consequences would be catastrophic. I'll do it, he said finally, his voice steady. But I'll need your help. Althra nodded, her eyes reflecting a glimmer of hope. You will have it. Together, they turned back towards the passage, the weight of their mission settling over them like a dark cloud. Maddox didn't know what the future held, or if they could succeed in preventing the coming storm. But he knew one thing for certain. Whatever happened next, he and Althra were in this together. Maddox's heart raced as he and Althra made their way through the dim passageways of the outpost. The weight of their mission bore down on him, each step resonating with the enormity of what was at stake. They had uncovered a truth that was far more terrifying than anything Earth Command had imagined, a lurking, ancient force, waiting to be awakened. Do you really think this ritual will hold it? Maddox asked, breaking the silence as they reached a crossroads in the tunnels. It must, Althra replied firmly, but there was a tremor in her voice that betrayed her fear. The ritual is designed to strengthen the barriers and suppress the entity's influence. If we succeed, the connection will remain dormant. And if we fail? Maddox pressed, knowing he needed to hear the worst-case scenario. Althra's silver eyes met his, and there was no hesitation in her answer. If we fail, the entity will be drawn to the fragment signal. It will consume everything in its path to re-establish its dominion. Maddox swallowed hard. Great. No pressure. They emerged into another chamber, where Karen and several other Surani were waiting. The tension in the room was palpable, and Maddox could see the distrust etched into their faces as they glanced in his direction. He didn't blame them, he was an outsider, an invader, and the fate of their people now rested in the hands of a human who had once been their enemy. Althra, Karen said, his voice tight. What is the meaning of this? You brought the human here. He is not just a human, Althra replied, her voice calm and authoritative. He is an ally in this endeavor. We will need his help to complete the binding ritual. Karen's eyes narrowed. You are placing your faith in an outsider, a spy, no less. I trust him, Althra said simply, her words carrying a weight that silenced further objections. She turned to Maddox. There are three keystones that must be activated to reinforce the barriers around the fragment. Each keystone is connected to the Psion network, and it requires both Surani and human psionic energy to unlock. Maddox nodded, still trying to wrap his mind around the concept of human psionic energy. He had always thought of the mind as an untapped frontier, but to the Surani, it seemed to be a navigable realm, a dimension of thought and emotion they could traverse with ease. Okay, Maddox said, trying to project confidence. So how do we do this? You must focus your intent on the keystone, Althra explained, gesturing to one of the crystal formations that jutted out from the chamber walls. Your thoughts must be clear, and your emotions controlled. The keystone will respond to the resonance of your mind. Great, Maddox muttered under his breath. 
no pressure. Althra moved closer, her eyes fixed on his with an intensity that made him feel like she was seeing straight through him. You are capable of this, Maddox, she said softly. Do not doubt yourself. Maddox took a deep breath, stealing himself. He approached the nearest keystone, placing his hand on its surface. It was cool to the touch, but he could feel a subtle vibration beneath his palm, a faint echo of the energy that connected the entire outpost. He closed his eyes, trying to clear his mind, but his thoughts were a chaotic whirlwind of fear and doubt. What if he couldn't do this? What if he failed and the entire Surani civilization was lost because of him? Focus, he told himself. You've faced worse odds. He tried to calm his breathing, focusing on the feeling of Althara's presence beside him. Her faith in him felt like a lifeline, and he clung to it, letting the tension slowly ebb away. Relax, Althara murmured, her voice barely above a whisper. Do not fight the energy. Let it flow through you. Maddox exhaled slowly, letting the fear melt away. He focused on the keystone, trying to project a sense of calm and purpose. He wasn't sure what he was supposed to feel, but he concentrated on the idea of connection, of bridging the gap between his thoughts and the energy within the crystal. At first, nothing happened. Maddox felt a flicker of doubt, but he pushed it aside, willing himself to stay focused. Then, slowly, he felt a warmth spreading from his fingertips, a gentle pulse of energy that resonated with the keystone. Good, Althra whispered, her voice laced with quiet pride. Now, focus on the binding. Maddox wasn't entirely sure what she meant, but he followed her lead, letting his thoughts center on the idea of containment, of reinforcing the barriers around the fragment and sealing it off from whatever ancient force was lurking beyond. He pictured the keystone as an anchor, holding the network in place and preventing it from unraveling. The keystone began to glow, and Maddox felt a surge of relief. He could sense the connection strengthening, the barriers solidifying. He wasn't sure how, but it felt like he was part of something larger, like his mind was in tune with the pulse of the outpost. Now the others, Althra said, her voice calm but urgent. We must act quickly. Maddox moved to the next keystone, feeling more confident now. He repeated the process, letting the energy flow through him and focusing on the task at hand. The second keystone responded more easily, and Maddox felt a flicker of hope. Maybe they could actually pull this off. But as he reached the third keystone, a distant rumble shook the chamber. Maddox's heart sank, and he turned to Althara with a look of alarm. They're here, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Althara's expression tightened, and she glanced at Karen, who nodded grimly. The humans have arrived, Karen confirmed. Their ships are descending on the outpost. Maddox felt a surge of panic, his mind racing. He had warned Command, tried to call off the strike, but it hadn't been enough. Earth Command was coming, and they weren't interested in negotiations. We don't have much time, Althra said, her voice steady despite the fear in her eyes. You must complete the binding. I'll hold them off, Karen said, his voice cold and resolute. He turned to Althra. Do what you must. Karen, Althra began, but he cut her off. My life is a small price to pay for the survival of our people, Karen said firmly. Do not let my sacrifice be in vain. Maddox felt a lump form in his throat, but he nodded. Good luck, he said, his voice strained. Karen didn't respond. He simply turned and left the chamber, his footsteps echoing in the silence. Maddox knew that Karen was walking toward certain death, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. Focus, Maddox, Althra said, her voice gentle but insistent. We must finish this. Maddox forced himself to push the fear aside, turning his attention back to the third keystone. He placed his hand on its surface, trying to recapture the sense of connection he had felt before. But his thoughts were clouded with doubt, and the keystone remained cold and unresponsive. I can't do this, Maddox muttered, feeling the weight of failure pressing down on him. Yes, you can, Althra replied, her voice unwavering. You are stronger than you believe. Maddox closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. He tried to find that sense of purpose, of calm, but it eluded him. He was too afraid, too overwhelmed by the enormity of what was at stake. Trust yourself, Althra said softly. And trust me. Maddox opened his eyes, meeting her gaze. There was a certainty in her eyes that seemed to cut through his fear, 
and he felt a flicker of determination take hold. All right, he said quietly. Let's finish this. He closed his eyes once more, focusing on the keystone. He let his thoughts center on the idea of connection, of unity between their two worlds, between their people, between their minds. Slowly, the warmth returned, and the keystone began to glow with a soft, pulsing light. You're doing it, Althra murmured, her voice filled with quiet awe. But before Maddox could respond, a deafening explosion rocked the chamber, sending shockwaves through the walls. He stumbled, nearly losing his connection with the keystone, but Althra caught his arm, steadying him. They're breaching the outer defenses, she said, her voice tense. We must complete the binding now. Maddox gritted his teeth, focusing all of his energy on the keystone. The glow intensified, and he could feel the connection strengthening, the barriers solidifying around the fragment. He wasn't sure how he knew, but he could sense that the ritual was almost complete. But then, a voice cut through the noise, echoing through the chamber like a death knell. Maddox. It was Danvers, her voice amplified by the communicator. Stand down and surrender immediately, or we will open fire. Maddox felt a surge of anger. He couldn't stop now, not when they were so close. He turned to Althara, seeing the fear in her eyes, and he made his decision. Keep going, he said, his voice firm. I'll hold them off. Althara's eyes widened. Maddox, you cannot. Just trust me, Maddox interrupted, giving her a reassuring smile. I'll buy you the time you need. He turned away before she could argue, sprinting towards the chamber entrance. He reached the doorway just as Danvers and her team breached the outer defenses, their weapons raised. Stand down, Maddox, Danvers shouted, her voice hard and commanding. This is your last warning. Can't do that, Lieutenant, Maddox replied, his voice steady. I've got a mission to complete. Don't be a fool, Danvers retorted, her eyes narrowing. You're throwing your life away for nothing. Maybe, Maddox said, his voice tinged with defiance. But I'd rather die for something than live for nothing. He raised his weapon, aiming at the ground between them. Now, back off, he shouted. Danvers hesitated, but her team advanced, their expressions resolute. Maddox knew he couldn't hold them off for long, but he was determined to give Althara the time she needed. And then, everything happened at once. Danvers gave the order to fire, and Maddox braced himself for the impact, but before the shots could reach him, a barrier of psionic energy erupted around the entrance, blocking the projectiles. Maddox turned to see Althara standing in the center of the chamber, her eyes closed and her arms raised, her entire body glowing with a radiant light. She was channeling her energy into the fragment, reinforcing the barriers with every ounce of her strength. Maddox could feel the air humming with power, and he knew that she was risking everything to complete the ritual. Althara, he shouted, his voice filled with urgency. You need to finish this, now. Althara's eyes opened, and in them, Maddox saw a determination that matched his own. She gave a small nod, and then, with a final surge of energy, she completed the binding. The fragment pulsed with light, and Maddox felt a wave of relief wash over him. The barriers had been reinforced, the connection stabilized. The entity would remain dormant, and the outpost, and the Surani, would survive. But the relief was short-lived. The strain of the ritual had taken its toll on Althara, and as the light faded, she collapsed to the ground. Maddox rushed to her side, his heart pounding in his chest. Althara, he whispered, his voice filled with fear. Stay with me. Her eyes fluttered open, and she gave him a weak smile. It is done, she said softly. Yeah, Maddox replied, his voice thick with emotion. You did it. Althara reached up, placing her hand on his cheek. Thank you, Maddox, she whispered for believing in me. He wanted to say something, anything, but the words wouldn't come. All he could do was hold her hand, feeling the warmth slowly fading from her skin. Althara, he said, his voice breaking. Please. But she was already gone. Maddox felt a surge of grief, his chest tightening with the weight of loss. He had risked everything to save this outpost, to save the Surani, and now it felt like a hollow victory. Lieutenant Maddox, Danvers's voice came through the communicator, cold and distant. You are under arrest. Maddox didn't care. He had made his choice, 
and he had no regrets. As Danvers's team approached, Maddox remained by Althara's side, holding her hand and staring at the fractured crystal that had defined their mission. He had come to this outpost as an infiltrator, a spy. But now, he was something else. He was a man who had chosen to believe in the impossible, to fight for a future that was worth saving. And that was a victory no one could take from him.